want to show you some chord licks. Now these are things that I've collected over the years. And I think they're fun to play. They're ways of approaching different chord changes. You know, it's a way of, of playing. I like to call them just chord licks. Just like we have guitar, solo, jazz licks. Well, these are chord licks and treatments, chord treatments that you play or can play against certain chords. And uh, it's a great way of learning new chords as well as playing chords more linear where you're playing melody as, as opposed to a static, always playing static chords. Instead, you know, little things that make us make our playing a lot more interesting. Okay, so that's what jazz is about is having fun with chords and creating melody with your chords. You know, you first have to study jazz chords static as block things. In other words, you, you look at this chord and you gotta make your fingers go where they're supposed to go and play this stupid chord. And then you realize, when, where am I ever going to use this? You know, it's what a bizarre chord it is. Well, this, I hope to answer that with some of these, some of these licks because it shows how I can input some of these weird chords and how they sound good and even why are they even here. You know, if you look at the history of chords, what a lot of it is, is melody passing through chords, which creates, if we look at the melody against the chord, now it creates a new chord. This melody against this chord creates, say, one different sound. And it's got a different name. This melody or this note against this other dominant chord creates another sound. So. Then we analyze that chord and it becomes a name and, and there you have it. But that's kind of where it comes from is melody weaving its way through chords, therefore creating different chord names for each one. And anyway, there's a lot of, lot of different ones and I, I think you're going to find it kind of interesting. So anyway, I hope, uh, hope you get into this. Here we go. Okay, now this lick here is around a B minor 7, E7 to A minor. Same idea as going in the previous lick, 2 5 of a minor key. Now, in this case, We've got some different chords, some different things happening. If I can remember it. Now, you know, we see that all the time. B minor 7, flat 5, E7, to A minor. You know, and, you know, we play along and do this stuff. But isn't this a little more interesting? If you put it in right, remember, you want to use this as comping ideas too. We don't want to overshadow a soloist or anything, but we want to also inspire a soloist by playing some nice things that he can play off of. Or even in our accompaniment over the song, you want to play it so it really enhances, it, it's a lot more interesting. So that's what jazz is all about. You know, there's a fine line between stepping on people and all that too, so you got to be conscious of that. But at the same time, when you play a chord, you know you want to be able to you want to be able to to make some music with those chord changes, and and not so much just hacking away at the chords. Let me show you this close up. Eleven. Now we're talking about playing a B minor to E to A minor. So we're going to set up this A minor chord. Here's how we're going to do it. With a melody that goes like this. And then 
we're going to end on an A minor. So I'm starting on a B minor 11. So here's the seventh fret. And I've got an E there. So and now move it up one fret now to an F. And that gives me my B minor 7 flat 5. So there's B minor 11 or B minor sus 4, however you want to look at it. B minor 7 flat 5. Then E7 sharp 9. We're going to go to that Hendrix chord. Then to F diminished. And remember, an F diminished is functioning actually as an E7 flat 9. Basically, you can create a diminished chord on either the 3rd, 5th, flat 7, or flat 9 of a dominant chord. And it's going to function as, hear it? Function as some kind of E7 flat 9. So there's my first four chords look like this. Sweet, huh? Now we're going to D minor 6. Now remember, D minor 6, look at, is the same as B minor 7 flat 5. I've got a, an A in it, an F. Well, down here I had an, an A and an F. There's a B. I had a B here and a D, and I had a D here. So this is an inversion of this. Same chord, different inversion. Huh? Now to G sharp minor, uh, G sharp diminished. So I'm going to grab this diminished right here. So I've got G sharp, D, F, and B. And now E augmented sharp uh, 5. In other words, this little finger is just coming up. It's going to change the character of the chord. The name of the chord. And then we're going to go to that D diminished. Remember, we, and last time we played this chord and went, and then like that, right? To <laughs> C minor. But what we're going to do is we're just going to play this chord and we're going to go to A minor 9. And the way we're voicing it is I've got a high E in a 12th fret, a B, an E, and a C, and an open A. So. Isn't that a pretty sound? And boy, does that set up that A minor chord? Now you could start off a song like that, you know. song uh, you want to play uh, and then you know whatever so uh, one way of harmonizing that we could we might be able to go backwards Here's number 11. 